hey, it's it's Making Waves episode 114, and uh, this is our Halloween edition. Well, it's not Halloween today, but it will be next Tuesday. Uh, and with it's with our one of our favorites, uh, Chris Motionless. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you uh, being on here. We're here. We made it. I I heard it was for the Halloween show, and I was like, well, I have to I have to show up for this. I'm here. Absolutely, and it's just so weird to think that we're going to be sailing on a Halloween inspired cruise without you. It doesn't make any sense, but so be <laughs> it. We'll do it again at some point, I'm sure. Yeah, I feel um, I feel like that was decided uh, after we were already on last year's. So um, it is what it is. Do another one, we'll be know, back. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Even if it's a, a holiday cruise, you guys coming on always brings a little bit of spooky. So we're always good with that. So you guys are in Detroit today. You're finishing up. You mentioned earlier before we went uh, to recording that you guys have six days left. You're going to end Halloween night in Philly, which is super fitting because that is a very scary town. <laughs> <laughs> it can be yeah it yeah for be. sure for sure but uh what i noticed about this tour right now you're out with uh you've gotten knocked loose and after the burial and alpha wolf with you is you guys have been an absolute touring machine this year with the trinity of terror and then i think the other one was a dark horizon yeah you guys i mean this is like you guys <clears throat> are like touring like a 1970s band yeah <laughs> I mean, it's been nonstop, man. What's up? Uh, Weird, because we're starting to sound with... like a 1970s band, too. <laughs> we started start jamming on stage in between songs, and I'm just like, feel the bell bottoms just growing out of my pants. It's great. <laughs> but obviously, you guys are in support still of the album Scoring the End of the World. And uh, it's been a long run on this one. But you, I, if I'm reading this right, I was kind of looking at your schedule. You guys are basically going to continue this like into 24, though, but doing kind of the European run for the album is that correct yeah we uh we've been touring basically all year non-stop we did three back-to-back -to -back tours through the summer we did europe in june uh dark horizon july august and then we had two weeks between this tour to start so it's just been crazy back to back to back and after this we're going right into working on a record then literally directly into starting to tour for not particularly for that record, but kind of just retouching on touring and getting back into it next August. So there's really not going to be too much of a break with nothing going on, but I don't really do well with nothing going on anyway. So this, that's fine with me. Yeah. Well, you're you... probably in your, th in your third win stage at this point. <laughs> well, when exactly are you guys starting to have you, uh, starting to record are you recording in uh pennsylvania los angeles Where, what's your plan uh we have to finish writing the record i mean we wow. haven't really had any time to even sit down and write like i've touched on a bunch of little pieces here and there but um we've not just straight up sat down with the intention of like okay it's record time um so that's really exciting i'm gonna take like probably one five to seven days off and then it's hmm. just right into it and we're going head first. So hoping to have it start, hoping to start recording in like April. Amazing. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's where my mind was like, how, how have you guys had time? <laughs> we have not at all. And I don't even, <laughs> I don't even bother writing on tour. It's just impossible. So yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Plus your body's yeah. in a different, completely different space. Like, you know, like, yeah. how, how is that going? Uh, like mano y mano here when you're out there, um as long as you've been as hard as you've been how how are you like how are you holding up how, what do you do like where are you at right now like how do you how do you wake up and uh then like i guess I suppose how do you get prepared to go to sleep and do it all again tomorrow you know? <laughs> man this tour in particular has been uh personally and then it's starting to hit the band but um We've been like, I mean, thankfully, we found a lot of help on this one where, um, <clears throat> you know, doing the two back to back throughout the summer, I was totally fine. I was like, felt like I was playing some of the best shows, like personally, vocally and just energy and felt so good. And then I think uh, starting this tour was fine. And then I don't know what happened, but I don't know if it's just like from VIPs and coming in contact with somebody or just general stress and wear in my body getting ready for this tour and doing this tour but I got really sick and 
had to cancel a show and then just it just was a avalanche of like oh my god like what what's happening like i was so ready for this tour and so excited and it just ended up snowballing on me where it was like i was barely getting through shows but just you know having to rely on the crowds to sing parts and it, it we did the shows it was great they were awesome but it just like wasn't the show that i wanted to be giving that i was so excited for this tour and I ended up being on like tons of medications and getting through it. And then as soon as I got through it, the rest of the band got sick. So now they're all dealing with it. And it's just been like that. We've had, we very fortunately have a tour manager who um, is really great with, um, he's been getting massage therapists to come out to shows a lot. He, we've been doing IV therapies and all kinds of stuff to like really, really make sure that we're treating this as serious as we can. And, trying to stay healthy that's awesome people don't think about i mean the the the, the tools are there now that like they weren't even just a few even before the you know the pandemic happened that some of these things weren't readily available and you know if anything it's awesome to hear that people are are, are utilizing and found, found the services because i mean your body and your mind you know it, it was a hard space that we all came out of and now you're going full blast like yes i, I see every single one so I wanted to ask you as personally how you're holding up, but also just to hear like, what is it? What's it like out there right now? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for asking. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, it's it's funny, Chris, because people tend to forget that your day is not just nine o'clock to 1030 and then sh shows over. It's like starting at, you know, early afternoon because you've got these type of interviews, you got podcasts, you've got radio interviews you got meet and greets you got vip stuff you got special acoustic things you're doing that the label signed you up for and then you got to do the show and then you got to fight through somewhat questionable catering from time to time and you're right before all these iv and massage it was like call the rock doc get your b12 and get through it instead of actually really sitting through some sort of program that you can stick to to get you perfectly well instead of just enough to get through the show um, so it's super interesting to, to hear that you guys have taken on the IV therapy things become big. Could have invested in that. Huh. Yeah. Um, but it's funny too. This, this production now is your biggest to date, I would think. With it's very theatrical, heavy pyro. Uh, that so now you're dealing with <laughs> trying to play your best shows physically, but now you're dealing with cues and where am I going to mm -hmm. stand during that? That's got to be that's got to work you over, man. Uh, it's for sure something it, like an adjustment comparatively to like, you know, past tours. But mm -hmm. I think at least for me, there was so much time and attention put into the tour that like, I think I was very like mentally ready. And, and I felt like after the two summer tours, very physically ready. Like I was, again, feeling like the best I feel like I've ever felt. Um, but then the other side of that coin is like, the amount of work that went into getting this tour ready to go was probably the most stressed out I've ever been just because it was from the second that I woke up to the second I was going to sleep, whether it be working with, you know, our LD on the lighting stuff or working with the cherry bombs on what we're doing for wardrobe and changes and uh, to getting our songs ready, like just so many aspects that, that I feel like, go into a tour that people don't really realize uh because you're seeing it all at once and you'll get to like fine tune fine pick and each stuff like um it's just it's just been a lot and it has been a serious undertaking but like it's all it's like anything that you do in life where it's really really hard and complicated for the greater good when you get to that moment where you like stand back and look at it you're just like wow you know there when we played the first show of this tour just standing on that stage and looking back at everything and being like, holy fucking shit, this is real. Like all these time, all these thousands of emails and phone calls and minutes and hours of life gone into something. And then looking at it, it's, you can't, it, it's indescribable. It's awesome. You mentioned the cherry bombs. How did that collaboration come to be? Or, you know, did you guys just feel you needed this extra element or what was that about? Yeah, we, um, we've, so we've been doing like, um, you know, characters or dancers or mm -hmm. um, people on stage. I think 2013 is the first year we did it. And then okay. we did it again in 2017 where we had like different characters, like two women come out and 
do different characters and dances and interactions with the crowd. And then on the la last year when we started touring, we we were aware of the cherry bombs and we we're like, hey, like let's, you know, we we know some of them personally. Let's see if they'd be interested in coming out and doing more strictly choreographed stuff instead of just character and interaction stuff. Mm -hmm. And then that just started that. And then this year, I was like, well, let's take what we did last year and do it even bigger. So we have four of them out now with us. And it's, you know, very, very fine tuned choreography where they're doing their thing. And then we interact around them or with them. And it's just such a cool element to the show that I feel like, you know, it, it's interesting to see that in like heavier music, but it's working. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it really does uh, give a whole nother dimension for the crowd to fixate on during, you know, it's really, it's tough to watch five dudes just rock out for 18 songs you know like you, you get bored so all these extra elements sure. really help yeah well yeah, yeah it, it brings it it brings a theatrical aspect to it all mm -hmm. you're so good at that man uh you've always been so good at that but i i love the way that your mind thinks i love i, I love the fact that uh, the sacrifices that you put up with as a human to give the gift of the enter the space of entertainment to to the rest of us and you've always that you're you and the band but I, I mean, I, I mean, I know how far you're, you know, uh, you go back with creating props with your father, you know, I don't know how many people know how much work you actually put in to what the public is seeing in, uh, in these shows. And for years and years and years, you've done that. And the fact that you're able to like you do how you described it is like every 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 band dude's dream is to be like, I don't want to be five dudes on stage rocking out. And then when you get to have the chance to like, Oastfully do it, put these people out here and put on a show that you've always wanted to put on. Uh, I, I can't imagine that feeling anything else other than awesome. I'm, am I, I'm, Thanks, I'm hopefully Chad. I'm not wrong. Yeah. yeah I mean, you fucking no. crushed it. So cool to I, hear. Yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, it's certainly really cool to be involved in the finest of the details of these things, but it's also equally as awesome to know that you're surrounded by teams of amazing you know people that are there to also make your dream come true like you know the pyro team the lighting team at literally all the we have two buses packed full of people on, the, on this tour and each one of them is so integral to the show that it's just like you i, I love just kind of standing back and just watching everybody do their individual jobs and it's again it's just such a cool feeling to me to be like wow it all comes together to be one big thing at the end every night and it's you know but the cool thing is fans recognize that about this tour and it i've seen nothing but you know positive stuff so i feel like it's very well recognized and you know your very wonderful nice comments definitely reinforce that so thank you <laughs> of course man uh i got a quick question about <laughs> about if you don't mind justin about uh no the the additives if you will in in, uh, in the culture of music i mean you guys just put out the reimagined i mean well i guess the extended version of the record but before that there was um which include new songs and some different uh, i guess remixes of some of the songs that are on there but yep you did something so fucking cool with saxel rose on that song werewolf <laughs> and the video was dope the performance i saw of you guys it was dope how do if you don't want me asking for our fans how, i mean everybody i've i've talked to is always do you see that fucking you know so how did that all come together man uh well he's he's been uh i i think he's you know been a fan and, and been around for a while and um we met him in what is it called sterling heights maryland or something like i can't i can never remember the name but we met him in uh in i think in maryland or baltimore area and uh he showed us that he had done like covers of our earliest album or one of our earliest albums on saxophone i was like just like he, what what am i watching he's so so talented and such a cool guy and um i was like well we definitely have to have him on stage at some point. He, the night that we met him, I think he performed on stage with Beartooth and uh, we were just like, we got to make this happen. And then I, when, you know, years later, Werewolf comes out and I was just like, this is the moment, like that song, 
being the weird song that it is needs something act to make it even crazier and the guitar solo being a saxophone solo was like <laughs> godly godly so yeah i watch that video all the time because and it's so cool because he's like he's such a perfect performer he's yeah. great at what he does like he's the total package and he's definitely recognized by everyone as like that and it's it's great so i was like we got to get him on the song and not just have it be a live thing yeah this is dope i can ask yeah. you that my next question i think, think justin had something but i wanted to no ask look but, but ask, ask away uh, so then t t then adding on to that here here you come with uh, the uh uh you guys did this song with elenium was that your track i think it was their track that you featured on or vice versa yeah it was a, a like a collaboration track where we um he he reached out to our producer drew okay. and who i think he was working with and was like hey let's get together and write a song so um we all got in a room and spent a couple hours writing the song tracked it the next day and oh shit. here we are so yeah it's a it's a lenium i guess featuring motionless and um it's cool because we're, we're playing it on this tour and it's like yeah it's it's the reaction has been really great it's definitely it's funny because i i'm joking but i'm not joking that's my favorite song to play every night but it's the one that i like i get i just lose my shit to that song every night so it's really fun that's awesome yeah. when i saw that and heard the song so that's even cooler it wasn't like a track that you guys re reimagined with him or vice versa it was a it's a new song together as co-writers that's mm -hmm. fucking dope that's even cooler yep. man it sounds awesome too i bet you it's fun yeah. place out there. i think yeah. it's a little side note maybe a little uh a little tidbit for fans to slide in there i think we're gonna try you know, doing some stuff like that on the new record. I don't know what will make it to the record and what will, what won't, but uh, I definitely want to try exploring things like that on the album more where I feel like a lot of things that we've done are very much centered around like making a new version of older things. And while I think that that's just, a, that's a very core thing for us. I also want to try really using like that cutting edge electronic industrial edm like all that stuff and really incorporating that in as well and seeing like how we can combine that and make something maybe you've never heard the shape of motionless to come yeah got it <laughs> i can't awesome. keep stop not thinking about tim capello in lost boys when i think of saxophone rock yeah right i think he I think that guy just did an appearance with somebody that was really big. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, that's everyone thinks that guy. It's yeah, just the test. It's pushing the the pushing the boundaries of the space in general is, you know, it's needed. It's mm -hmm. it's obviously it works, and we're in a completely different playing uh, field nowadays where you can take risks, you know, quote unquote. And and then watch them pay off, it, or if they don't pay off, it's not it's not as it, it's not going to crush an act like you because you you have such you have fans that expect those risks, you know. Um, yeah. I think that's very cool. Well, I think people's new cycle mind too is like they totally forget about it. If it was if it stuck with them, great. If it didn't, they forgot about it forty eight hours later, right? <laughs> Squirrel, <laughs> Squirrel, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, Chris, as we're kind of doing this Halloween thing, what's your earliest Halloween memory? Do you remember that? And how old were you? Um, I don't know if I have like a specific one particular memory. I just remember uh, my birthday and being in October. I just remember associating, you know, when you're a kid, your birthday is the happiest day of the year, birthday and Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I always remember there being Halloween decorations around for my birthday. And like, I just see my old house that I grew up in and like, I can close my eyes and I'm just right there. I could see each decoration. I could see where everything was. I remember, you know, I've told this story a million times every other year being a, a alternating between being one of the Ghostbusters and one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I, I don't have like that one memory, but I know mm -hmm. that I... I feel like I started recognizing Halloween as being like a really big thing in my life very early because of the association of my birthday being in October. Sure. So you mentioned those two costumes. You, Oh yeah. When is your birthday? Uh, the 17th. So it was last week. Right. 
dude, happy happy belated. Well, you're 21, so young. <laughs> he can fresh he can ripe try. old age of 21. <laughs> it, it's funny. So you mentioned those two costumes. If you were to dress up tomorrow, what would you dress up as? <laughs> Other um, than Chris from Motionless and White. <laughs> right. <laughs> um <laughs> I haven't like this year, because we're playing a show, I mm-hmm. uh I'm gonna do probably like I like doing either the Michael Graves look every year, but yep. um, I haven't done that in a, in a little while. Uh, I think this year we're going to go with like full blown body paint. Um, our makeup artist is a crazy effects airbrush artist. And mm-hmm. yet she's out here doing like beauty makeup on us and not what her like ultra specialty is. So I think I'm just going to be like, make me a, an evil pumpkin thing and just go for it so i might have like body paint that's all awesome. over and full face of that stuff so that's what i want to do <laughs> that's awesome. awesome so so when you were growing up halloween your birthday do you remember the first um horror film you've ever seen uh i believe jaws that's the first one that comes to mind um i remember that scaring the hell out of me as a kid um yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Jaws. Because like in my mind, I, I used to be terrified of horror movies as a younger kid. And I remember uh, seeing that and not really thinking that a shark in my mind is, was associated with scary stuff. And then, you know, there it is. Oh, you're oh, just like yeah. traumatized. <laughs> yeah, Fear of the unknown, man. It's like, you yeah. know. T- but it's, it's so funny you mentioned that now, not horror movies per se, but horror and that kind of imagery stuff is now integral to your <laughs> to your life. And yes. it's kind of funny, you know, that uh, I, now you're all in it. Yeah, I think uh, like growing up, I wasn't afraid of things like Frankenstein and skeletons and vampires and everything like that was never in my mind, like a thing that scared me. That was just Halloween. So to yeah. me, there's a there's there's still to this day as a distinction in my mind between Halloween and horror um and even though that even though there's they're so interconnected and you know basically one and the same they're still different in my mind and I uh was very big into Halloween stuff but jack-o'-lanterns all that stuff and Mm -hmm. uh horror took me a little bit as a kid to get like okay to be okay with it I think I just had to realize like it's not real it's not real you know and uh that's that's what got me through it so, now I love so you it. like the yeah you like the macabre stuff about halloween i do too about like the leaves on the ground and skeletons and that's the cool stuff the gore stuff gets sure. a little freaky you, you you know it's funny i i make that uh i make that distinction between us and ice nine kills all the time i think motionless is halloween macabre you know like vampires frankenstein universal monster uh bats like all you know halloween stuff mm-hmm, sure. and then i i see ice nine as like the horror side of that stuff and I'm, maybe that's why fans love the the two together or what, whatever it is i just that's how my brain divides the the two and uh it's it's just cool that um you know there you could like a wide range of that world of stuff and be involved in it but still have it be like specific enough to whatever you like most about it yeah. Isn't it funny, though, that the genre is blown up and that you guys are kind of one of the first out of the gates with this whole thing. You know, you've got everyone from, like you mentioned, Ice Nine and even Sleep Token to a certain aspect with the masks and their kind of thing, obviously Ghost. Um, what is it about that kind of aspect that has w- welded itself really into, into the hard rock and metal genres? Why has it gotten to be like that? Like, you know, where I, did all these bands come from? And is it just basically everyone had the same interest and they thought, I can apply this to music and make themes and create this thing? What What is it about it? Sure. I, I My guess is, of course, just because, I mean, it, there's an obvious aggressiveness to horror. And mm-hmm. if I think about what music I would associate horror with, it's something more, more aggressive sonically so i guess just in that sense they make sense together in my brain so like if you're really into those to those things i can't see you going and you know being 
Ed Sheeran and writing a song about, you know, Thrasher films. It just doesn't make sense to me. So like, it just, it just fits so well that yeah. the aggressive nature of rock, hard rock, uh, metal works with stuff that is seen as scary, aggressive or whatever, you know, just more visually, um, I don't know what I would not a stop just visually just more striking in a way that's off putting to some people, but really, really hits home for others. I don't, I don't know. It's funny you mentioned Ed Sheeran because uh, he was the inspiration behind Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, I always, expect that. I don't know why I always use Ed Sheeran as my funny like comparison to things that are like, like if I think of the opposite of our world, my brain just always says. Ed but it's Sheeran. crazy because it guy's a freaking metalhead, which is so funny. Yeah, Ed Sheeran it's would love that. figure. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I mean, Ed Sheeran would be like, "This is exactly what I was hoping would happen with my life." <laughs> 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 have you ever heard the band Twin Temple? I have not. No. It, so you, you were bringing you, you you yeah yeah it's it's a it's horror themed, but it's like doo woppy. Uh, it's super cool. It's a girl and a guy. They might even be, uh, that's cool. You know, it was husband and a wife. I'll send you a link to it, but you were talking about, and I'm like, Oh my God, like, and now all of the things that we traditionally place as items of horror or terror in, then we can put the aggressiveness to it. Slasher films, all of that stuff. It, it, it's starting to pivot with like younger acts where like the maybe the satire of it all of those two things mm -hmm. being together you know uh and it's obviously a niche thing but it, it's cool. like chelsea wolf for instance there's something haunting and terrifying about sure yeah. chelsea that it falls into that that's what that twin temple things and i, I find it interesting that would be a dope tour uh for emotionless in in chelsea white tour like that's that, that and you chelsea. slap it in what's <laughs> That's so cool because, like, I, I think about, you know, what I said about, like, like how I see, like, Ice Nine being the horror, us being the the Tim Burton Halloween Sleepy Hollow stuff. I see Chelsea Wolf as the Midsummer, uh, yeah. the witch, like, that uncomfortable, hereditary, like, <laughs> each each band, there's so many genres of those, of those, or so many sub-genres of horror or spooky stuff that it's cool to see bands sound like those things. Like I see her as, as definitely that uncomfortable, like, yeah. Like, if, you if, know, if, heavy chest. Yeah. If Chelsea was a movie, she'd be the witch. Yeah. That movie, the witch <laughs> kind of yeah. like super like dark and like ominous and like, don't go in the woods. Uh, but the twin yeah. temple thing's funny. Cause it's basically, he's mentioned this do up. It's basically satanic malt shop music. Yeah. <laughs> It literally, right. yeah, yeah. It literally I don't know how that is. fits into it. It, it. Like I said, it's a niche, but immediately I was like, "This but is an interesting so world." You, you are right. They're it's out wide. They're out with Behemoth right now. So, no, oh my God. Figure. Yeah, I guess yeah. that uh, um, what your uh, satanic malt shop music. The close I think closest I think I would think to that would be Ghost. So I'll have to check this band out and uh, see what you about. you like them. They're they're a husband wife. They're kind of like. They're kind of like the cramps, right? That kind of like real twangy kind of thing, but like totally like drink blood on stage and just it's a ton of fun. But I mean, you, you take it with it, tongue in cheek. Um, so with the next record, is this going to be kind of, are you guys looking to kind of change some things up or just kind of keep this kind of continuation? Or is there a way to get away from motionless, the sound and create something new without getting too far off the reservation? Uh, I mean, my initial thought going into it is that we are always reserving, you know, a few spaces on the album for things that we want to try um, that we've either always wanted to, or maybe that just came to mind recently. So I say uh, the things we've always wanted to, like, I feel like we've really always wanted to incorporate even more electronic stuff, like the cyberpunk stuff or the EDM stuff, but we've, just never really pushed in that direction too, too much until the recent record. And it, you know, thankfully went over really well. And mm -hmm. that makes us feel comfortable to go even further with it now. And that's cool. Um, I think that on, on the opposite side of that, something that I also really like is that you get to build up this idea of what fans do and don't like. And I now know 
after this last record, like, okay, we've done a few songs that sound like this and they have had this reaction and maybe we kind of steer away from that. And we try something that, that clear space to try something even more different, or I, I don't know. We just, I think the last record set a new type of tone for how we work. And that is that we don't work with this specific goal in mind. We just write songs. And mm -hmm. that's what we did in the last one. Granted, we had an extra year and a half worth of time because of the pandemic. This time we don't have that luxury, but I think we're still just going to write songs and whatever feels cool. And then in the end, whatever like the deadline of like, we need to pick what songs we want for the record, then we'll see what we got and then we'll fine tune it from there. So it's just whatever happens, happens. That's that. That's the fun. Would you, yeah. would you say that the last record was the most fun that you made? What was the record you remember having the most fun making? Definitely the last one, just because, you know, I'm, I'm a very big, you know, time is, is the key to creativity for me. I do feel like I do all right under pressure, but I just love the feeling of like, I'm going to take my time with this and, uh, really exhaust the options that I possibly hear for this song. And then I never feel like I left something behind and didn't get to explore it. And the last record uh, being over the pandemic, it was just like endless time to explore any idea you had. And it created some really cool things like Werewolf. I feel like, I don't know if that song would have been a song if it weren't for the pandemic and that kind of time, but yeah. getting to try a hundred different things with that song to get it the way that I wanted it was like, a, you know, I every, every single band will tell you that, that we all wish we had more time. And that's something I even notice it with, it, it's really just anything creative. The, the I listened to the a podcast that the, the writers from Stranger Things did, and they talked about, they feel like the last season was so amazing because they had all this time to work on it and it you know it showed so much every episode was like holy shit and i could tell the amount of time that went into it and anybody will tell you anybody creative will tell you that time is certainly the the thing that's always like you know you could have your paint you could have your notes and there's a lot of those but time is the one thing you're always short on I guess that's yeah. just you know that's life in general so yeah. not exclusive to music it, it's yeah, funny Chris like we you're... talk about we oh sorry no no no, no. I was just gonna say it's first re your first record it feels like you never you never have that moment you know that moment of exploration where you're figuring it out wood, wood shopping with your buddies once it works then it just is, is about you know if it get when you catch fire you just got to keep feeding it feeding that fire and hopefully it doesn't burn down the whole village you know yeah. uh but yeah I, I i heard i heard that about the last record and i wanted to ask if that was true or not so thanks yes very much. if uh we, you're talking about expanding the sound and, and and leaving room leaving some room to breathe in, in your records i think that's definitely the thing that we always talk about spotify the goods and bads i think the good of it is that obviously it allows fans to kind of be more expansive without costing them anything to like look into new genres and go what is dark wave what is what who's gunship i want to know what this stuff is because my favorite artist is starting to incorporate this and it's so good as far as easing fans into that mindset like it's okay for them to do this because now i fully understand what this is and how it applies to them mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah that's such yeah. a cool way to i never really thought to look at it that way where it offers a chance for fans to explore genres without cost to them Mm -hmm. of taking the risk on a you know a ten dollar record that they don't like right. and then they then there's that that pain associated with like well fuck not only do i not like this but i'm out 10 bucks mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i i see the streaming world as mostly great for uh not that you're asking me this i but i'm just touching on and no no thing. like i do mm -hmm. enjoy it for a lot of reasons um certainly don't enjoy bands uh having their art not paid for getting you nicked know. yeah of course yeah, yeah. but uh but yeah the yeah. the value of it elsewhere makes up for it don't tell yeah, Spotify it makes up because now that. you got no you got new fans that can buy tickets to shows buy merch do exclusives bundles whatever it is that's the thing the bundles that's where it's at for a physical product yeah. but, discovery um, 
on the band side on the artist yes. side, side too spending this time you you know uh we just talked about sax uh, saxol and and elenium all of these things that you know, may or may not have been a possibility without that that uh, that time to explore without you know yep road money in the liner <laughs> Yeah, what were we saying, Justin? I'm so, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, we we're just talking sorry, about everybody. the uh, the idea of, of using technology and allowing technology for fans to kind of, and it doesn't matter if they're okay with anything or not. You're still as an artist, you do what you're going to do, but it allows them to kind of ease into understanding what it is this band's trying to do because they're compl- they want to listen. They what's Massive Attack? I don't know what that is. Oh shit! Oh, I can see how they use this. It's good sometimes for the fans that kind of work that kind of mad scientist thinking, how could this apply? Like, wow, I wonder if I combine Tricky with Black Sabbath. What's that going to sound like? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cooking, essentially. Uh, hey, uh, when you when you started the band, uh, what was the year? 2004, three, two? Uh, it, it just depends on, uh, I've actually been, I may have talked about this before. I'm actually considering asking fans because i'm just i'm sick of wondering and now that we're really approaching 20 years i want to know um to make it quick the band started its original lineup in 2004 we didn't have the name until january 1st of 2005 and then we did our first tour i think in the spring of 2006 so when we did our song 570 i said the 10 years was in 2006 started in 2006 because i feel like that's where we came like a legitimized band even though we were putting out we put out eps and stuff and we're playing shows all around like our our area i felt like touring and doing our first tour in a van was like when the band became legitimized so that's when i felt like the the anniversary or like the start was but technically you you Depending on how you look at it, it could be 2004 when the original lineup was born, 2005 when the name was created, or 2006 when we started touring. And I, I'm curious what everyone's answer to that would be. And uh, either way, it's approaching 20 years. When do you feel like, let me ask you this then, uh, if you were to ask everybody that question, uh, I challenge asking yourself this question when did you feel like it was what you wanted to do be you felt like there was a future in in what you were currently doing you know Mm -hmm. um i guess i would say when i felt like there was like a reality to it would be somewhere in 2005 you know not particularly when we came up with the name um or when we named the band motionless and white but sh- i think we played uh, v- uh two or three months after we played a show where we opened up for senses fail and that was our first actual like big show f- opening for a national act and i think that was probably the moment where i was like this you know this I, i'll never give up on this being a thing and I had that mentality before we even started the original lineup, but I think that was the the moment where it was like, we, I called and called and called and called and pestered this promoter to put us on the show without having a demo even released yet. We recorded it, but it wasn't released. Uh, and finally he put us on and gave us 200 tickets to sell. We sold out of the tickets, selling them to all of our friends. We played the show and it's it's just awesome. To, you know, he he was blown away by that. And it's funny to still to see that guy now. And he comes up to it like we saw him in Albany on the Dark Horizon tour. And he came into our VIP and was just like, hey, what's going on, guys? And it's just so wild to me to think that that 20 years ago, I was pestering the hell out of this guy every every week to put us on a show. And it's just that that was definitely a big moment where I was like, we we did it. We we you fucking we did. Didn't dude. give up, you know. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. That's full circle of shit. So, was it Crocodile Rock? Uh, was that was that the the, the venue? Uh, one? uh <laughs> no. Uh, are do you know Tom Taylor from Croc Rock? Yeah, uh, yeah. Is that who it was at this point? No, uh, <laughs> it was uh, Stan Stan, uh, who does more like the New York and further East Coast stuff, but. Uh, it was at a place called the staircase, which was okay. right, 
right where I lived and it's not there anymore, but it was for a while. And uh, definitely a, a really pivotal venue for Breaking Benjamin blowing up back in the day. Like I saw them there a hundred times and it's just, uh-huh. yeah, really cool venue. That's awesome. You have a very great memory, Chris. Like, uh, I mean, that's a that's a pretty specific situation, you know. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your memory is fucking ironclad. <laughs> do you do you hey. ever do you ever think about where you if you were that? So I'm sorry to ask all these n- nostalgia things, but I think about. I'm at, I'm wondering at that moment, could you have ever? How many things on your bucket list? Let me just ask you this: Do you feel like you've checked off a lot of like goals? from that person to the person you are now? Honestly, most of them. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, the, we just on this tour, just last week, nine days ago, we played a show at my, I had a top three bucket list of venues that I've always wanted to play in my life. And we did number one, got checked off a couple years back. Number two, got checked off last year. And number three, got checked off nine days ago so you know i my top three venues in the world i've always wanted to play are gone all these bands i've ever wanted to tour with most of them we've gone to tour with like i'm running out of like the top of of all these lists and i just feel i i do feel like if the band stopped today i would be happy because i've done essentially everything i wanted to do at this point now it's just doing more of it or growing the band and accomplishing like a different version of those same things um so yeah but it's cool because even though i feel like i've hit those marks i don't feel any less hungry or any less motivated like it's just it's like it's checkpoints along the way that keep me motivated rather than feeling lazy because i've accomplished everything Um, yeah mario kart what uh do you mind list telling us what those venues were uh the electric factory in philly um i used to go there for shows a lot um mm-hmm. and i just remember seeing my fa- my favorite band bleeding through play there and they played probably one of my favorite shows i've ever seen in my life of all time um and i was like i would die to play this venue and um <laughs> just from going there a lot as a kid Mm -hmm. uh so that was number one number two was uh the pavilion at montage mountain um which is a couple minutes from where i live where i my first show ever was we played uh in 2005 we played uh a battle we played on warp tour our very first time on the ernie ball battle of the band stage because we won the round to be able to play so it was my first my first concert I ever saw was at Montage. Saw No Doubt in like 95, 96. Um, yeah, I'm really old, sorry. Uh, and then, you know, playing our first Warp Tour there in 2005. That, that was really special. And then just all the shows I've gone to there. So that was number two. Number three was uh, Hard Rock Live in Orlando. So, oh, yeah. wow. Oh, all right. Far nice, dude. Yeah. But you're gonna well, drop can Red I ask Rocks you why that something. one made it your list just out, out of curiosity? Uh, so yeah, they're, they're, uh, back when I was in high school, early high school, um, we, my family would go on trips to, to Florida and universal and stuff. And I remember going to my very first Halloween horror nights back then. It was like just a few years into them doing it. And when we went to that, it was like, I mean, it, it changed my life. I'm a horror nights fanatic, like fanatic. And it's always been that is my favorite place in the whole world. The happiest you'll ever see me and the happiest I could ever be is at Universal and slash horror nights. And knowing that there's a venue in essentially in that where I can play where a lot of my favorite bands have played in the location that is my happiest place ever. I was like, that's it. Like I gotta play there. And we finally got to headline it a couple of days ago and it was magical. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. dude. In October yeah. during Horror <laughs> Nights. Let's go. Dude, there you go. It, yeah. Do you in get a free park during, during a free park? <laughs> they give you a free park pass for that one? <laughs> yeah, we uh, we got the park in the back of the building. So thank <laughs> oh. you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. 
<laughs> well, hey, uh, Chad, while we do walk the plank with uh, with Chris. Yeah, man. So uh, I don't know if we did this last time you were on. Uh, it's pretty simple. We ask you random questions, uh, one of, one from each, and then we ask a random question from last week's guest. You don't know who it is until you answer it, and then we keep that cycle going. Okay. My question for you is what villain do you secretly cheer for? Uh, yeah, I feel like, uh, it's, it's tough for me to answer the Joker because the Joker is like the, the fucking like patron saint of incels and I am not <laughs> that, uh, so I don't like that, but, but I also like the psychotic and very frantic, chaotic energy of that character and the very like especially the the anti or the, the very anarchy anarchist sentiments of that character so in yeah. some ways i i support it but others uh i don't enjoy the fan base so a lot of people i'm sure a lot of people are gonna be pissed off if i said that but maybe maybe the truth hurts pal <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it certainly does that uh Here's that's a my, good one my my question is this if it, for one year what animal would you like to be for one year <laughs> um i feel like even though i i would want to be like a, a giraffe because i'd want to be even taller and like just you know see the world from up there uh I would not want to not be able to use my hands. So I feel like I maybe a, maybe a big ass gorilla. So I can like feel what it's like to be shredded for once in my life. <laughs> yeah. Nice silverback. Yeah. That'd be good. It's, it's yeah. Nice. It's a good yeah. silverback. Or if you want to get a good, a good viewpoint from the world and, and you still want to be strong and shredded, you could be like a bald eagle or something like that. Right. That's true. Big talons. Yeah. yeah that actually, awesome. That actually does sound a lot more uh, intriguing as you say that, because then I can fly around and see the world from, you know, much higher than if I were a giraffe. There and you, you could shit on the gorilla's silver back from the sky. And yeah. Like, Yo, yeah. What absolutely. you going to do about it, bro? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so the, our last question, is, uh, the question is, what sort of advice would you give to your 17-year-old self today, if you could tell them anything today? Um. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, damn, yeah, I don't know. I would say uh, it's tough to not want to be like specific to moments where like I felt like I made just decisions that I regret or something, but uh, I don't know. Um, I feel like you want a more profound answer than just specific moments or anything. So I... I maybe maybe to just be less trusting of people because I feel like I've as a kid I was a little uh, very naive and feel like I just kind of wanted to always see the good in people and let some people in that ended up being very harmful to my life or my job or some version of that and yeah. uh it's you know it's caused some damage that I just don't feel like or that I feel like I, you know, wish I didn't carry with me. So maybe to just yeah. be not particularly to be less trusting, but to be more aware and self-aware um, and look at the world in a little bit more of like a, a suspicious context, even though I, I wouldn't encourage anyone else to live that way. But that's, with that's what I tell myself. Yeah. <laughs> like the world of the monarch uh yeah. that's a, yeah i mean that's a, a pretty important thing to think about when i i get when you were saying that i was picturing my 17 year olds so i'm like yeah bro that's exactly what you should do uh well that came from aj who's the vocalist of the band fire from the gods Got it. um what would you like to ask next week's guest oh boy um hmm Let's go. I mean, let's let's jump off of or relay off of something in the last question that I answered. Let's. My question would be: If you could take back one moment of your life, what would you take back? 
Ooh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We'll go, like we'll go race it completely. Deep there. Yeah. Okay. Boy, oh boy. That's got 50 different answers. And shades of yeah. gray. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Awesome. Well, Chris, we know you guys are in the midst of a, a tour and you've got a, six more dates and you've got a show today in Detroit. So, man, we can't thank you enough for your time. You've given us an hour of it and we really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for making this Halloween uh, thing very special for us. We appreciate the time on that. Yeah, it was really, really fun. So thanks for having me, guys. I always enjoy talking. So I look forward to round three whenever. <laughs> Obviously, I absolutely. Would, I wish uh, it was, I could the, be there, man. Yeah, scoring the end of the world, uh, the deluxe version's out now, right? Uh, it is, yes. Yeah, yes. Pick that up. Awesome. Right on. Physically. Get a physical copy. Go to your brick and mortar record store and go get it. Thanks, Good man. luck finding one. All right. <laughs> right. Well, there you go. It's always hope. Anyway, Chris, right, thanks a lot, right. bud. Appreciate it. Take care. Hi, guys. Thank show, you. Nice. See ya. Um,